Hello everyone, it's Christmas Eve here and uh, my girlfriend and I were invited to a party so in case you don't hear from me tomorrow, uh, you know, it always depends how the party will go, uh, I thought I'd show you a nice wild game uh, to fit nicely with this Christmas spirit. Uh, the game was played in 2007, it was the Rui Lopez festival in Spain and we have a game uh, by Ruslan Ponomariov uh, uh, and Ivan Sokolov. I always actually thought Ivan Sokolov was a Russian guy, but uh, it seems that uh, he's, a, he's a Dutch grandmaster uh, with some Bosnian roots. And uh, Ivan Sokolov here, he won the Yugoslav Championship in 1988 and he won the Dutch Chess Championship twice. Uh, also, uh, I, I think he won one uh, 10 years after he won the Yugoslav Championship in 1998. So definitely a strong player and uh, his peak rating was somewhere around uh, 2706 uh, but that was more than 10 years ago. Now I think he <clears throat> mostly commentates uh, on games and doesn't really play that regularly. Uh, and with the white pieces we have Ruslan Ponomariov. He was a FIDE world champion from 2002 to 2004. Uh, he became FIDE world champion by defeating Vasily Ivanchuk in the knockouts. So definitely a strong player. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty wild game because it features one variation that uh, I don't think it's uh, that often you can see this variation. I think the last time I saw this variation was uh, when Kramnik was playing that match against Deep Fritz. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you can see this very often. But uh, you'll see what I mean. We have d4 by Ponomaryov <coughs> and d5. C4, uh, the queen's gambit, D captures on C4, uh, Sokolov accepts the gambit, and E4 now, uh, the central variation. And now B5, uh, actually protecting the gambited pawn. Uh, A4 now, uh, C6, A captures, C captures, and knight to C3, going after the B5 pawn. Uh, bishop to D7, again defending, uh, knight to F3, and E6. And if you, <clears throat> if you ever read any book or watched any tutorial on the Queen's Gambit uh, declined, uh, the Queen's Gambit accepted, uh, you will often hear that it's, uh, it's never a good idea to actually try and protect uh, the Gambited Pawn because you will always uh, mess up <laughs> somehow. Uh, but you'll see what happens in this game. Uh, bishop to e2, we have knight to f6, uh, Ponomari of castles, bishop to e7, uh, d5 now, uh, e captures, e captures, and queen to b6. And here we have bishop to f4. It seems that black, uh, even Sokolov, is ready to castle, but uh, castling here wouldn't be such a great idea for black. Uh, sorry, for example, if black castled here, you get this annoying d6 move. Now you have to play bishop to d8, and after knight to e5, uh, it's, uh, it's a very passive position for black. Bishop f3 is coming, uh, the bishop will assume this very strong diagonal. So, not, not, not a great choice of moves for black. So after this bishop f4, uh, Sokolov played bishop to c5, kind of not allowing his bishop to become almost trapped with d6. And now Sokolov definitely is ready to castle. Uh, but Ponomaryov uh, had, had a different idea here. He played bishop captures on c4. And this is one of those sacrifices that you can't really decline. If, if you decline it, you just lost a pawn and you, you're just worse. So the bishop is accepted, bishop, uh, b captures on c4, and now queen to e2 check. Uh, unfortunately, you can't block this check with anything. If you try something like bishop to e7, simply rook to e1, uh, white will win back the piece, and uh, being up a pawn, it's, it's uh, probably a winning game. Uh, but after queen to e2, uh, king to f8 was played by Sokolov, and now comes knight to e5. Uh, the idea is... Uh, so uh, Ponomarev didn't want to capture uh, the pawn with the queen, he played knight to e5, he wants to capture it with the knight. If the queen captured it, then moves like a5 and queen b4 are coming, uh, you know, if, if black manages to exchange queens here, he will be he will be fine. So after knight e5, bishop to f5, and now comes knight to a4, attacking the queen and the dark square bishop. So queen to b5, knight captures on c5, queen captures on c5, and knight captures on c4. And so far, for the sacrificed piece, Ponomaryov has only one pawn. So, one pawn for the sacrificed piece, but it's a, it's a mighty pawn. This past uh, d pawn could, you know, could soon become a queen. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Queen to d4, uh, and the bishop to e5 now. Since the bishop was attacked, the bishop moves with a tempo. Now comes the bishop d3. Uh, now both queens are attacked. Uh, Ponomaryov plays queen to d2, and here we have queen captures on d5. So, what's the idea? Why did Ponomario give up the d5 pawn? Uh, he plays rook f to d1, now with a double attack on the bishop. 
Uh, Sokolov plays queen captures on c4, and now Ponomaryov doesn't capture the bishop, he plays rook a to c1. Uh, we have queen to a6, and now uh, Ponomaryov is actually down two pieces, and he lost his very important central pawn. So what what is he doing here? Uh, it's uh, very, you know, if you simply capture the bishop, okay, you, you win a piece, but you're down two pieces, this achieves nothing. Uh, but he plays bishop captures on f6, and this is the wild move uh, that completely <laughs> uh, destroys black. Uh, what's happening here? If you play queen captures on f6, uh, you get queen to b4 check, and it's pretty much game over. If you block check, rook c8 is checkmate. Uh, if, you, if you don't block it, if you play something like king to e8, then comes rook e1 check, king d8. Uh, queen to b7, and there are all, all sorts of uh, threats. Uh, queen c7 is checkmate, rook to c8 is checkmate. Uh, there is no defense. W with best defense, which are basically just silly moves, it's checkmate in 8. Uh, so after this, bishop captures on f6. You can't capture with the queen, but can you capture with the pawn? For example, g captures on f6. Uh, not really. Queen to h6 uh, would come. This is with check, king e7. Uh, rook to e1 check, king to d8, and now queen to f4, uh, threatening queen to c7 checkmate. So after you block this with queen to b6, uh, then you get queen to f3. This comes with an attack on the bishop, also attacking the rook on a8. Uh, both of rooks are cutting off the king's escape routes. This is this is uh, this is winning for white. So after this bishop to f6, uh, Sokolov declines the bishop and he plays knight to d7, developing a piece, and now preparing to capture the bishop. Uh, we have bishop back to c3, uh, bishop to b5 now, since the bishop was attacked twice, queen to g5, and we have knight to f6 now. Uh, queen to c5 with check, king to g8, and now again we have bishop captures on f6. And it's amazing that, uh, again, this is twice in this game that Ponomario cap played bishop captures on f6, and again, you can't capture with the queen or with the pawn. Now, if you play queen captures on f6, uh, you get queen to c8 check. And this is just devastating. Uh, black is getting checkmated. Rook has to capture. Rook captures. And now, after the queen blocks and the bishop blocks, the rook will just gobble up all the pieces and it's checkmate. So, after this bishop captures on f6, you can play g captures on f6, but then you get rook to c3. And there is no defense against rook to g3. Uh, this will come with checkmate. Uh, you can try some freeing moves, for example, h6, but again, rook g3, king h7, queen to f5, this is checkmate. So, this is pretty amazing. Twice in the game, Ponomaryov played bishop captures knight on f6, and uh, both times you can't capture either with the queen or with the g-pawn. Uh, so, h6 was played here, making some room for the king, but now, again, bishop back to c3. And this is one, <laughs> one annoying bishop. Uh, rook to e8. Uh, rook to d6 now, uh, with a tempo on the queen on a6, uh, queen to b7, and we have queen to f5. Uh, queen to e7, and uh, this is one of those moves in the game, uh, Sokolov was probably, he was probably devastated, uh, as he lost that knight twice to bishop captures on f6, and here, uh, he could probably hold the position, you know, with, with a move like f6 or, or a6, uh, defending the bishop, uh, but he actually played queen to e7. He doubled, I mean doubled, he placed the queen and the rook on the e-file, now he controls the e-file, uh, you can't really move the bishop or queen to e1 will be checkmate. Uh, and this comes with tempo on the rook, the rook on d6 is attacked, but he missed the simple queen captures on b5. And there is no move here for black to play. If you capture the rook, white captures rook uh, with check on e8. And now actually, after all of this, white will be up a piece. So after this, queen captures uh, on b5. Uh, the Dutch grandmaster Ivan Sokolov resigned the game. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marcel Berthelmer, uh, Eric K. Dickinson and Martin Dimitrov Dimitrov for a contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon. And in case I don't see you soon, uh, since tomorrow is Christmas and everything, a Merry Christmas to everyone, and uh, I hope you have uh, a fantastic uh, Christmas and uh, the days that follow Christmas. So yeah, uh, thank you all, I will see you soon.